This is uh, December 23rd, 2008. I'm James Thomas Green, and this is my life, my journal. And then today, we'll go down in the history of my life when the story of my life has been written. It was one of the most significant days in my life. Because today, Karina and I broke up. I hadn't heard from her in a while. She hadn't been answering his, her emails. She hadn't called. And her phone was disconnected. And so uh, I, uh, I knew she was having some situations in her life. Her father was giving her a lot of stress, and he was getting ready to go back to Mexico. And uh, finally today, I decided to go down to where she works at the Monterey Aquarium. And I saw her, and she told me that she's living with a guy named Dave now. This guy named Dave, she knew. Now, he knows me, and I guess I've met him. He's a business student at CSUMB. She's living with him, and they're having sex. So it's not casual, although she says they're not in a relationship. But living with a guy and having sex, she says, well, I'm paying half the rent. She says that for her and I, the passion is no longer there. She didn't feel any passion for me. We uh, talked for a while. She was at the reception desk in the Monterey Aquarium Visitor Center. Then I went back a couple hours later, and we talked over lunch in the cafe at the aquarium. She says she wants to be my friend, and she wants to see me regularly. She says maybe someday things might happen again between us, but for now she says she needs to be independent to go her own way, although I feel a lot more confident about that statement if instead of moving in with Dave, she had moved into an apartment by herself. She says he takes care of her. Well, he's got a job, apparently, and got money, and so, you know, I almost can't blame her too much for that. I feel like there was a scene in the movie when Harry met Sally, when Sally is telling Harry about her partner, husband, boyfriend, I don't remember which, the Meg Ryan character was talking about how he had told her that he didn't want a relationship and that's why he was breaking up with her. But instead, a break, instead you know, after supposedly breaking up for not wanting a relationship soon afterwards he was getting married to another woman and the words that really drive home to me is when she was saying in the movie he said he didn't want a relationship but in reality he didn't want a relationship with me and that's how I feel Corina claims not to want a relationship she just doesn't want one with me She was young when we got together. She was 22. She says that it was, she kept saying how it wasn't fair to me, that she got involved with me when she was so young and didn't know what she wanted. And maybe that's right. So many people have made comments about, you know, how lucky I was to have a young girlfriend. But in reality, there is, you know, in addition to the youth and energy, there is the unstableness of it all. And so, she says she's going to give me back my ring. She's going to keep the class ring, which I wanted her to. She says she'll give me half of what I paid for it, because she really likes it, and it's really useless. With 
anything else. The ring, I could never get back a fraction of what I paid for it. Special ordered it. Got a large ruby, and not ruby, uh, emerald, because of the green. I think in reality, I'll probably just put it away somewhere, and I don't know. Maybe it'll be my hope thing that someday I'll be able to give it back to her. She claims that she has told Dave that she doesn't want a relationship with him, and he he says, okay. I mean, I guess, you know, he's got a girl paying half the rent and giving him sex, so, you know, what guy would say no to that? Of course, in six months, I don't know how he'll feel. I asked her, I asked her Karina, how he would feel about her coming to see me, and she said, I don't care. So I said, you're just using him for sex and a place to live. And she said, basically, you know, words to that effect. And so we had lunch. We talked and talked and talked for about an hour until she had to leave. And she hugged, and we hugged a lot. I wanted to kiss her, but I held. I think she wanted to kiss, too. But I think we both held back. She went away, and she's, um, this afternoon she's supposed to do what they call costume. She put on a costume, stands out front of the aquarium, which today she's wearing a penguin costume. Sometimes she wears the otter costume. I went out there, and she was hugging me, and her companion, who was out there too, her work partner, took a picture of her and I together, which may be the last picture we take together. And, uh, you know, she kept hugging me, and her partner said, wow, she just can't get enough of you. And I said, well, we were once engaged. And she kind of, the woman kind of looked at me like, what? And I stood there for a little while, and I felt a little... I wanted to go back up again, but she was posing with a lot of other people because that's her job. And so I just turned and walked away. I walked up the hill, went back to the car, and I drove around and went past the front of the aquarium. And she was still there posing with people, and I couldn't tell if she waved. She waved, but I don't know if she's waving at me or she saw me drive by. I drove off, drove a little bit through Monterey, up the hills, through uh, Pacific Grove, and um, right now I'm on the beach over here. The waves are big out there. It's only quite crashing. Turn the radio off. I sure hope this is recording. Yes, it's still recording. But out there you can see some of the waves are quite large. It's been kind of stormy lately. I went and sat down there. I tried to walk. I started walking down there through the sand and started to walk out through the rocks. But I'm not stable enough yet to walk through there. She said that I haven't been able to physically take care of myself as well as she thought I should. She says I haven't wanted to. Ironically, I've been swimming and walking, and I'm probably in one of the best shapes I've been in since we've met. So Karina says that she's uh, going to come and see Dad, me and Dad, right after her birthday. You know, in early January. We'll see. I told her that uh, our future really depends on her. If she wants a relationship with me, it's going to be up to her to make it happen. I told her I'm not going to be calling her. I'm not going to be instigating things. If she wants a relationship with me, it's up entirely up to her. If I don't hear from her, that's the way things are. It did seem a little tense for 
me to hear her say that maybe someday we'll come back to each other. She'll come back someday. Because when I was telling her about the, I told her about the Harry Met Sally feeling I've had. And she said, well, yeah, but you remember that in that movie they came back to each other. And maybe it'll happen with us. I think it's a little more unlikely with her living with that guy. She wants to see me about once a week. I don't know if that'll actually happen. I don't know if I want it to happen. I am so torn. On one hand, I think maybe I should just flat out give up completely and just not see her, at least not for a long time. Like maybe, well, she says she's going to go to Mexico in about six months. She said Dave is not going with her. He understands that. Um, she wants me to go visit her in Mexico when she, after she gets down there. She says it's going to be several years before she's going to be feeling like she's going to settle down. And, you know, Dave may be just the first of a whole bunch of guys she goes through in the next few years. I don't know that I want to wait that long. And I think, you know, for me, I'm torn. I mean, on one hand, I'm not really eager to go out and try to get another relationship going. But if one came up, I don't know that I would be especially wanting to turn it down. I mean, there have been several women over the last couple of years that I think at least potentially I might have been able to build a relationship with, or at least, you know, started dating, but I didn't. I know several women in various classes have been kind of flirtatious. There was one uh, in my accounting class, you know, was like, you know, always very friendly towards me, but I didn't do anything because of Karina. I tried. To, I wanted to be loyal. I wanted things, something to happen. Now I feel like a sucker. Now I feel stupid. Now I feel lost. I've been on the verge of tears several times, including a couple of times while I was talking to her today. I always managed to pull it back, and so far I haven't really broke down yet. I think it's going to happen. I haven't told Dad, of course. I haven't been home yet. He's been especially mean and nasty lately. So I'll just have to tell him tonight. I'm just going to tell him I'm going to keep it simple. Karina and I broke up. I want to tell her it's because she's going back to Mexico, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not going to mention the other guy. I'm not going to mention anything else she said. But I feel like oh, I, I have been waiting for her for so long. I've been waiting for her to get through her uh, things with her parents. You know, and now finally her father's gone, and just as her father leaves, she dumps me. Finally we can be together whenever we want to be together, and we can't be together at all. It's not fair. It's not right. My love life is cursed. She was the first relationship I ever had of any real significance. In every way that matters, she was the first. In every way that matters, she was the first. I feel like my life has changed. So I sit here looking out over the waves, crashing on the shore. You know, and all the stuff. I was out there, I uh, looking on the beach, I found this odd little vertebrae. Don't know what it is. 
ever seen anything like it. Could be a fish. Could be a bird. Could be a seal. Have no idea. Some kind of vertebrate. So I'm thinking maybe this will be kind of symbolic of this day. Because I'll always remember what day I found it now. The day I broke up with Corina. I called Joel after I initially told Karina that the, after she left the reception or was going about ready to go back to the reception, I uh, went for a walk through uh, uh, Cannery Row. And when I reached the end of Cannery Row, I called Joel, and fortunately he wasn't working. He was taking the day off to do some last minute shopping. And so, uh, I uh, told him about it, and I started talking, and I think I started going a little bit too far, because he kind of, I guess he needed to go, so I let him go. I told him that I was debating whether or not to go back to see Karina at 2 o'clock. He told me he didn't think I should. Um, and Joel, uh, she, she seems to get Joel and Stephen G mixed up. Apparently Stephen G has been coming to the aquarium recently. He was there only a couple of days ago. I don't know how I feel. I'm still numb. In some ways, if it was absolutely clear that there was nothing more to be said and it was over, that would be tragic, but it would be a clear road ahead. I mean, should I go out and start trying to actively seek dates again? Would I even if I... I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, I... How would things be, you know, in six months if I'm working full-time? I mean... Maybe if I start making trips down there on a regular basis to Mexico, starting in a year or so, you know, six months from now, she goes down there. Maybe I'll go down there with her. Apparently, Mexico has changed a lot. Her father said it's apparently got it's totally different. He's in Jalisco with his family. Mama's in uh, Mexico City. Districto Federal, the parent with the same thing as D.C. for Washington, D.C. Am I ready to go to Mexico? Am I ready to go to Mexico for love? And then there's Dad. She said that uh, one of the things, and she's told me this before, was Dad, that, you know, we could never be alone with him around. He was always there. But the problem was she would never come. Last year has been a sham. I just don't buy a lot of the things she was saying. She just wouldn't come by. I wouldn't see her but once every few months. I'm torn between being furious and being sad. This is a hurricane of emotion. The dishonest way she did it, holding back, telling me, oh, just, I'll be with you. Just let me finish fixing my life. I don't know, maybe years from now I'll even play this for her. A lot of what I've just said, I told her this afternoon. I don't know when I'll hear from her again. Again, I guess I will hear from her again. But what is our future? What is... Well, I know our future. I'm very sad. I'm very upset. I don't 
know what to do now. Dad, I don't want to go home now. If I go home, Dad will start yelling at me as he usually does. He'll take it pretty bad, too, when I tell him that I broke up with Karina. In fact, I don't know if he'll even want her in the house after this. She might not be welcome for him. Monterey Farmer's Market is going on now. Maybe I'll go there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go over there for a while. Walk up and down. Maybe see if I meet anybody. See anybody I know. I really need to be with somebody. That's one of the things I'm going to miss. Not necessarily the sex. We haven't had sex in a year and a half. I mean, if that's not a sign of problems, what well, is? But, you know, her touch, her massage, she gives a good massage. The feel of her. Knowing that she's going to be naked with him tonight. How can I see her? And that's about the greatest betrayal of a relationship. I feel betrayed. She kept saying, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Yeah, she's just being honest. And she kept saying, it's better that I tell you now than to let it go on. Yeah. I suppose. I guess, you know, I could still find somebody else in my life. Right now, I feel like this oceanscape out there, nothing to the horizon. Nothing to the horizon but storms and crashing waves. 